Today we're going to be talking about some coffee cleaning hacks. Let's get started. So you'll start by taking some coffee grounds that you've used and scoop them into a bowl. Next, you're going to take a soap like Dawn dish soap or another dish soap of your choice and add one tablespoon of the dish soap to the leftover coffee grounds. If you have a scuff or scratch in wood, you can use the leftover coffee grounds as a stain and place them onto the wood that has the scratch. Let it set for approximately 30 minutes and remove it. And you can see that it will darken, naturally darken your wood. If it's not as dark as you'd like it to be, go ahead and repeat the process. Scoop some of the soapy coffee grounds into your sink. Grab a scrub pad and scrub your entire sink. Make sure to hit the drain edges and everything else in your sink. The soap will disinfect your sink. The coffee grounds will scrub away anything that's sticking in your sink. The great thing about this is once you get it all put into the drain, turn your garbage disposal on with the water. It will disinfect your garbage disposal. Now, if you have a pot or pan that has something stuck to the bottom of it, simply put it in your sink, add some of the soapy coffee grounds, cover it with water just so it's covering the part that's burnt or stuck on. Let that sit for approximately 15 to 30 minutes. Once the time is up, grab your scrub brush and start scrubbing at the burned on items. If you need to repeat this process, you can. Finish cleaning it out and wash it out. Dry out some of your leftover coffee grounds and then put the grounds into the salt shaker and then put the lid back on top. Place the salt shaker near any place where bugs, ants, rodents get into your home. The smell will repel them from coming in. You can also sprinkle this outside on the perimeter of your house to keep them from coming in in general. Scoop up some of the soapy coffee grounds onto your glass cooktop or your stovetop. Just be sure not to use it on anything that's porous, as coffee can stain. Start by scrubbing your glass cooktop or your stovetop in a circular pattern. The soap will disinfect and clean your cooktop and the coffee grounds will be a light abrasive that can scrub away anything that needs to be removed. Take some of your leftover coffee grounds, let them dry out first, and then place them in an open container. These containers will deodorize your freezer and refrigerator and help it smell wonderful. Add some leftover coffee grounds to your garbage cans. This will help deodorize your garbage cans. Take a old recycled jar or a ball jar, mason jar of your choice, and add some of your dried leftover coffee grounds into the jar. I like to place these in our bathroom as it helps deodorize the bathroom. You can do this to any area in your home. You can also make a candle holder this way by placing the grounds in the bottom of a candle holder and then adding a battery operated tea light. And I hope this inspires you to try some coffee cleaning hacks of your own. This project calls for coffee filters. I used four cups of water and 20 drops of food coloring. I used red food coloring. You're gonna wanna take your coffee filters and kind of um, turn them the wrong way. They'll be easier to separate. You're gonna wanna separate them one at a time and just put them right down in the water. Now I've put on gloves because the food coloring will color your hands. And you can put as many as you want, uh, 10, 15 in at a time. And uh, the longer you let them soak, the more color they will pick up. Um, I want these to be pink, so I'm not leaving them real long, uh, maybe, two, three minutes is all that's needed. So I'm gonna push these down into the water, like so, and leave them for just a couple minutes. When you take your coffee filters out of the water, you're gonna to want to squeeze them over a bowl and squeeze as much of the water out as you can. And then you can unfold them like so. And there's lots of different ways to dry them, but one of the quickest is to just put some paper towels out and then take your coffee filters and separate them one at a time, spread them out, and just put them right down on the paper towels. And they'll start to absorb any of the moisture that is still in them. And then you can layer them and you can reuse the paper towels. You'll see this already has some pink on it. And the same thing, just press down so this absorbs any of the water from the top of those filters and put on two more. Just spread them out. Another layer of paper towels. 
but by squeezing them at the beginning, you won't have um, um, them be really wet. I know some people like to uh, put theirs in the oven, but I just don't even think that's necessary. This has them dry in no time at all. After all of your coffee filters have dried, you're going to pick out uh, six of your coffee filters. And what we're going to do is you're going to fold each one in half. <clears throat> so it kind of looks like a taco. Then you're going to fold it in half again. Fold it in half a third time. And then fold it in half a fourth time. So it will look something like this. Then you're going to take your scissors and cut. You just want to cut a little curve. This does not have to be exact. Remember, um, in nature, flowers are not all exact. They don't all aren't all exactly the same. I wanted that to be a little more curved, so I added a little, took off a little more. And it's going to kind of look like an ice cream cone. Then what we're going to do is we're going to unfold it and cut it in half. This is back to the taco shape, but with a little flare. And then we're gonna take each one of these apart and cut them in half. So we've got pieces that look like this. You will have four of those pieces from each one of your coffee filters. Like I said, you're gonna do that with six of your coffee filters. When you're all finished, Folding and cutting, you're going to have 24 pieces that look just like this. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take a piece of a paper wrapped or cloth wrapped um, floral wire. You don't want just the plain. We're gonna take our first piece and low temp glue gun. You want low temperature right there um, because you're gonna be putting your hand on here a lot and I don't want you to get burned. So we're gonna put a little bead of glue right there and we're gonna lay that stem right down on it. And then you're just gonna wrap that and see with it being low temperature, it's not gonna burn me. And we're going to go and wrap this as tightly as we can right around our first petal. Just roll, 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 roll. When you get to here, you're just going to put a little bit of glue right there. And again, using low temp, shouldn't burn you at all. And that is going to be the center of your rose right there, just like that. We're gonna do the same thing again. Put a little bead of hot glue right there. We're gonna put this down right on top of it, just a little bit higher. You want each petal to be up a little bit higher. Press that down and do the same thing. Roll, 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 roll. Nice and snug. When you get to the end, a little bit of glue to hold that. Now for our third one, we're not going to do it quite as tight. I'm gonna do the same thing, a little bead of glue and a little bit higher than our previous ones. Now this time, we don't wanna roll it quite so tight. So see, I'm rolling it just a little bit looser. You get to this point, instead of just a little bit holding this part, you're going to want to put a bead of glue all the way along there because it's going to be wrapped more loosely. And I like to squeeze the bottom like so. And about at this point, when I'm about, oh, maybe, maybe about halfway through, I'm going to take some floral wire or floral tape and wrap it around to hold the bottom of my rose really tightly. Whoa. If you haven't worked with floral tape, floral tape does not stick to anything, it sticks to itself and you kind of pull it down. And we're gonna, that's the first one we're going to have on our stem. And see, if you wanted to just use a rose bud in your arrangement, you wouldn't have to add much more and you would be all set. But we're going to continue to make a nice full rose. You don't want to squeeze this too tight and um, squeeze your rose too tight at this point either. And now this is not even enough to go around 
over all of the opening. So we're just going to continue to overlap them. You just wanna make sure and continue to squeeze the bottom tight. If at any time you want, you can go ahead and add another layer of your floral tape. Squeeze that bottom together really tightly. We've used all 24 of our individual petals. If you want, you can glue these down. Another alternative, you can take a pencil, or in this case, I'm gonna take a mini glue stick, and you can roll some of these outside petals as if the rose is opening up. So you can just take this right around your rose with your fingers and just roll around, roll the coffee filter right around those. And you just want to do that with um, your outer petals. Don't want to go all inside. And if you don't like this, out like this, again, just a little, little hot glue. Stick it right down. Hold it for a second and it'll stick. And you can get creative. You can, you can fluff it out a little bit if you'd like. Just like so. And there you have it how to make a coffee filter rose.